There's something about the intimate relationship between a YouTuber and their audience that always makes their deaths a shock. Many YouTubers, both young and old, are taken too soon. In May 2011, a devastating tornado swept through the city of Joplin, Missouri, reducing homes to rubble and taking the lives of 158 people, including popular YouTuber Will Norton. The witty 18-year-old was in the middle of his high school graduation when the weather outside started to turn, and after accepting his diploma, he and his father Mark headed home as fast as they could. Sadly, they couldn't get there quick enough. The powerful winds flipped the vehicle onto its side, breaking Will's seatbelt and leaving him dangerously exposed. Despite his father's attempts to hold on to him, Will was sucked through the sunroof of his vehicle. His body was later discovered in a nearby pond, concealed by debris. His aunt Tracy Pressler later said at a press conference, At least we know that he wasn't out there suffering. Knowing that he was gone right away was really a blessing for us. British YouTuber Sophie Anderson, aka Sophie Emma Rose to her subscribers, ran her channel from the sunny beaches of Phuket, southern Thailand, giving parenting advice that sometimes proved controversial. The 41-year-old was six months pregnant when the scooter she was on collided with an 18-wheeler truck, killing her and her unborn child. Boyfriend Danny Glass said in a 2017 Facebook post, I am in total shock as I've lost the most precious person I had ever connected with. My brain keeps going into denial. I am distraught. She was also pregnant, so I lost my child too. YouTube DIY fashion icon Tamisha Ridge was attracting millions of viewers to her DIY Misha channel when she was murdered by a bitter ex-boyfriend with a history of violence. In May 2014, the 31-year-old mother was found in her home with a fatal gunshot wound to the head, inflicted by a man with five previous convictions for domestic abuse against multiple women dating back to 2002. A stint behind bars did nothing to break his pattern of violence toward women, as he would later murder Ridge, a bubbly fashionista and mother of three. Described by The Guardian as an online middle-class version of the Kardashians, the LeBlanc family, who used the name Bretelli online, has over 4.9 million subscribers, and their vlogs used to focus on the three Bretelli children, Annie, Haley, and Caleb. That all changed on October 1, 2015, when his parents revealed a family tragedy on their Instagram, saying, Yesterday at 7.08 p.m., Caleb Logan Bertaley passed away of natural causes. This has come as a shock to all of us. Words cannot describe how much we will miss him. His incredibly funny, loving, and wonderful spirit made us all fall in love with him as a YouTuber, friend, brother, and son. The following day, the last video Caleb recorded was posted, entitled Dear Future Self. As the 13-year-old's fans began the grieving process, conspiracy theorists started to spread stories of foul play. In the end, local police were forced to release a statement confirming that there were no suspicious factors in Caleb's death and that no criminal investigations were underway. The haul videos that Connie Kin did for the What's Up Moms page made her famous among mothers on the internet. The parenting channel lost one of its most popular contributors back in 2013, when Kin passed away after giving birth to her second child, Ella. According to her husband Andrew, the bubbly vlogger was taken by an infection as a complication from childbirth. He continued, I treasure all of these videos and comments because I know Nathan and Ella will always be just a click away from seeing their mom smiling and caring about them, and a click away from understanding all the people she touched. Known to YouTube as Michi Monroe, Tamika Moore's channel featured hairstyle tips and tutorials. She started out in the fall of 2010, and by early 2014, she was attracting viewers in the millions, but her life and online career were turned upside down later that year. Shortly before her 29th birthday, Moore began to notice one side of her face was drooping, and she was having trouble with her speech. The doctors had bad news. She had suffered three strokes. After performing some exploratory surgery, they diagnosed her with an extremely rare form of brain cancer, and knowing the treatment would make her hair fall out, she voluntarily shaved her head and donated it to Locks of Love. Moore told People, I cried. It was very difficult because my hair was so much a part of my personality. I was calm but worried. These thoughts kept going through my head. Will I make it? I have to keep faith. The Chicago-based vlogger bravely fought cancer before finally succumbing to it in June 2017, aged just 32. Gamer Justin Carmichael was part of the first generation of YouTube gamers, well known for his enthusiastic You Can Play This series, in which he would import video games from Japan and teach people how to play them without knowing the language. Off camera, he was having suicidal thoughts, and he acted on them in January 2014. His wife Jenny wrote on Facebook, It is with a very sad heart that I must confirm my husband, Justin Carmichael, died on Thursday, January 23rd. You all made him so happy. Every time he was recognized from his videos, it made him giddy with joy. Affectionately known to his subscribers as the granddad of the internet, Peter Oakley made his first contribution to YouTube back in 2006 when he posted a fuzzy video entitled First Try. 
The British vlogger asked the YouTube community for help and advice in shaping his channel. Geriatric 1927, and word of the chatty pensioner soon spread, with more than 3 million people watching his debut video. After feedback, Oakley decided to use the video sharing platform to tell his story, taking his viewers on journeys into his childhood in wartime Britain. But people also tuned in to hear his gripes about the modern world. He told The Independent, There are millions of people without grandparents who find small comfort in old, simple stories. I have had my 15 minutes of fame and enjoyed every minute of it. In 2014, a notice appeared on Oakley's website, confirming what his subscribers had feared when they hadn't heard from him in a while, which read, Peter has just been transferred to a nursing care facility. He has cancer, which is a apparently too far advanced for treatment, and he is not expected to pull through. He signed off his final video with some typically British stiff upper lip. Sort of in conclusion, uh, I will say my possibly final goodbye, so goodbye. Personal trainer Achilles Williams only had nine videos on his channel when he died, but he seemed to be a star on the rise after his second video on the secrets of lowering body fat percentage raked in more than a million views. He filmed himself doing high-intensity workouts and also recorded motivational vlogs, but he sadly never got the chance to see just how big his channel could have become. You gotta stay off the competition and focus on yourself. The 30-year-old Atlanta resident was killed in March 2015 when a workout video went terribly wrong. According to USA Today, Williams and a friend gained access to a railway track and were filming a skipping rope sequence as a freight train approached. The intention was to have the train pass by behind the trainer, but they had tragically misjudged the width of the carriages. The train collided with the YouTuber, killing him instantly. Believe it or not, Williams was the second health and fitness YouTuber to be killed by a train in as many months. Model-turned-actor and reality star Greg Plitt 37, attracted millions of viewers to his channel, and he too decided to make a video on train tracks. Plitt was struck by a Metrolink train and fatally injured. Pedro Ruiz III wasn't a famous YouTuber in his lifetime, but he sadly became infamous in death as a shocking example of just how far aspiring YouTube stars might go to boost their numbers. In June 2017, he was accidentally killed in a stunt filmed for his partner Mona Lisa Perez's channel. It went horribly wrong, leaving the 19-year-old mother of one, who was seven months pregnant with their second child at the time, facing charges of second-degree manslaughter. She later pleaded guilty, resulting in a 180-day jail sentence. Perez's now inactive La Mona Lisa channel was a mixture of family vlogging and pranks, with the last video she posted before the fatal accident revolving around scary stunts at the fun fair. Little did her subscribers know that she and Ruiz had a far more dangerous stunt planned. She was going to fire a Desert Eagle pistol at her partner, who was going to stop the bullet with a thick encyclopedia. The bullet went straight through the book, killing Ruiz. Ruiz's aunt told KVLY, They were in love. It was just a prank gone wrong. It shouldn't have happened like this. It shouldn't have happened at all. According to a tweet Perez sent out prior to shooting, the whole stunt was Ruiz's idea. Minecraft gamer Technoblade garnered a massive following on YouTube over the course of his career. In August 2021, Technoblade took to the platform to reveal his cancer diagnosis in a video titled, Where I've Been. He explained that he decided to see a doctor after experiencing arm pain that wouldn't subside. They ran a couple of scans and then they came back and they told me that uh, the reason my arm hurts is because I have cancer. In June 2022, the gamer's father shared a tragic update with fans in a separate YouTube video titled, So Long Nerds. It was revealed that Technoblade left a final message for his father to read to his viewers after his death. The message began, Hello everyone, Technoblade here. If you're watching this, I am dead. Revealing his face and his real first name for the first time, Technoblade also thanked his viewers for their immense support and stated that he wouldn't have chosen to spend his life in any other way. The otherwise anonymous YouTube star was only 23 years old at the time of his death. Although Technoblade's family didn't share many details on his diagnosis, it was reported that he raised $500,000 to support the Sarcoma Foundation of America prior to his passing. 
That September, Technoblade was posthumously honored with the organization's Courage Award. Jonathan Grant Thompson, most widely known as the King of Random, shared fun, science-inspired YouTube videos with his millions of followers. The content creator died in Utah in July 2019 in a tragic paragliding accident. After an investigation, local officials concluded that the paraglider's chute collapsed due to a gust of wind. Thompson fell to the ground after his reserve chute also failed. The YouTuber reportedly began paragliding four months prior to his accident. Thompson's death was announced in a statement shared to Instagram, which read, It is with great sadness to inform everyone that Grant Thompson passed away last night. Grant had great love and appreciation for his fans. We invite you to share your thoughts for Grant and the channel in the comments. Please do a random act of love or kindness today in honor of the King of Random. The King of Random YouTube channel continued on after Thompson's death. His channel collaborator, Nate Bonham, elaborated on the decision in a compilation video shared in the late content creator's memory, titled, Thank You, Grant. Bonham assured viewers that he had Thompson's wife's blessing to continue the channel, and that Thompson likely would have wanted the same. He was 38. Australian YouTuber Corey LaBerry died in a car accident in May 2020. The content creator was celebrating his 25th birthday that night when his friend, Ink Master star Daniel Joseph Silva, reportedly ran into a stop sign and tree while speeding. Silva was later arrested on suspicion of murder, according to CBS Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Police Department released a statement that alleged Silva tried to leave the scene before being stopped by a passerby who witnessed the car crash. That July, Silva pleaded no contest to a gross vehicular manslaughter felony charge and received a 364-day jail sentence in connection with the deadly crash. He was released in October 2020. Corey LaBerry's family took to social media to speak out following his tragic death. His brother, Jared LaBerry, penned a heartfelt message on Instagram, alongside a drunk driving allegation against Silva, writing, This isn't something I thought I would ever have to sit here and type out for a very long time, or what I want to do right now, but everyone deserves to know, my brother Corey passed away last night in a car accident with his drunk friend driving. The late YouTube star's mother, Lisa Burton, also shared a statement to Instagram, penning in part, My heart breaks right now. On my son's 25th birthday today, he got into a car with a drunk driver. The accident killed him instantly. Known for filming vlogs, prank videos, and challenges, Corey LaBerry's YouTube channel racked up more than 300,000 subscribers. YouTube animator Monty Ohm's talents earned him a loyal fanbase that allowed him to launch the anime series, Ruby. He was also an animator for Rooster Teeth's Red vs. Blue series. In February 2015, Ohm died due to a severe allergic reaction experienced during a medical procedure, after which he fell into a coma. He was 33. Rooster Teeth released a heartwarming statement on their website following the animator's death, saying, as for honoring Monty, we will do that in our own way. In lieu of flowers or gifts, we ask that you simply do something creative. Use your imagination to make the world a better place in any way that you can. Very few people have the luxury of doing exactly what they want to do as their job. There's never a day where I forget that. It wasn't easy for Ohm's fellow Ruby creators to keep the show going following his death. In a behind-the-scenes clip of the anime, Co-creator Miles Luna explained that production was a real challenge, saying, Ruby Volume 3 was the scariest thing ever. Monty was gone, and that changed everything. Sharing how the show's creators managed to move forward, Luna said that the showrunners were confident that its viewers were already invested in plot and characters, but that they were concerned viewers may not want to watch the series without Ohm's contribution. Producer Gray G. Haddock assured viewers that he and his collaborators were trying hard to honor Ohm's original vision for the show moving forward. The ninth volume of Ruby premiered in February 2023. British YouTuber and TV presenter Emily Hartridge built a following after her videos on relationships and mental health gained attention. 
most of Hartridge's most popular videos incorporated the 10 Reasons Why formula. For example, her 2013 video titled Dogs Are Better Than Men, 10 Reasons Why, earned an impressive 23 million views. Hartridge died in an e-scooter crash in July 2019. She was 35. In the coroner's report, publicly shared in October 2020, Dr. Fiona Wilcox shared further details on the tragic accident, writing, Miss Hartridge was riding an electric scooter on Queenstown Road when she lost control after passing over an inspector hatch in the cycle lane and was thrown under the path of a heavy goods vehicle. Wilcox elaborated that Hartridge was killed instantly by the semi-truck. She also elaborated on the state of the scooter, which she said was being driven at too high of a speed. Additionally, its tires reportedly did not have enough air in them, which made it easier to lose control of the scooter. Hartridge's boyfriend, Jake Hazel, revealed to The Sun that some unfortunately blamed him for his girlfriend's death because he had gifted her with the e-bike for her birthday a couple of months prior. Hazel elaborated to BBC that his relationship with Hartridge has been helping him deal with these complex feelings, saying, "'What she has taught me has got me through. I feel close to her. I still do the Instagram, still do the YouTube, and continue her message that it's okay to have a tough time." Charlie Green Jr., YouTube's own angry grandpa, was known for his hilarious videos that often featured his family members. With the YouTuber's channel boasting more than 4 million subscribers, one of his most popular videos, 2014's Angry Grandpa Destroys PS4, has 46 million views as of this spring 2023. Charlie's YouTube career sadly came to end when he died of liver disease in December 2017. The social media star was 67 years old at the time and had reportedly been living with health issues for years, including a prior diagnosis with skin cancer. His son, Michael Green, took to his father's YouTube channel to announce his death to his subscribers in a video entitled R.I.P. Angry Grandpa. He began the announcement by celebrating his father for beating skin cancer earlier that year, before confirming another diagnosis that eventually proved fatal. In July, he was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver which we thought was early stage. Unfortunately, Charlie's diagnosis was not as mild as they thought, and Michael even theorized that his father knew this and refrained from telling his family. Michael went on to share that Charlie was released from the hospital after he appeared to be getting better, but he later died at his South Carolina home. Michael also celebrated the channel's viewers for the decade of support and expressed the pride his father had for the content they'd built on the platform. In the early 2010s, FPS Russia was an extremely popular YouTube channel which showcased a man with a Russian accent demonstrating various firearms and explosives. Along with the host, the channel was managed by producer Keith Ratliff, a fellow gun enthusiast based in the United States who spent most of his time behind the camera. Unfortunately, Ratliff's passion was the very thing that led to his death in January 2013 when he was fatally shot in his home office in Georgia. He was 32 years old. With his killer unknown at the time, Sheriff Stevie Thomas told the New York Times investigators were still in the process of questioning people of interest and that no one had been ruled out as a suspect. In turn, Ratliff's wife Amanda openly questioned her husband's death, telling WSB-TV that given his line of work, the circumstances that led to his death didn't make sense to her Keith's brother Kelly concurred, saying, For him not to pull out that gun and try to defend himself, he had to feel comfortable around somebody. Either that, or he was ambushed. As of this writing, Keith Ratliff's murderer has still not been identified. In 2018, his sister, Corey Bronner, spoke to Dateline about how difficult it was to know that her brother's killer was still out there. She told the outlet that she desperately wanted to know who took Ratliff's life and why saying, without any answers, it's been a living hell. I look over my shoulder every single day to see if there's someone behind me. 